is in your face. Who out of the OGs remembers the whiteboard? Well, it's back. So, drop me some questions down below to answer next time. Hi guys, it's Adam and welcome to another video. So today, we are back on the whiteboard. Now, I thought this white whiteboard was completely gone because it had all of these little kind of uh, cracks in it. It was all... It was all these like little plasticky cracks that were running through it and I thought, oh that whiteboard's terrible, it's just, it's gone on me really, really quickly. Well, anyway, I've had it sat up on this wall for about four months, not doing any, well no, probably about six months, not doing anything with it. And uh, I looked at it one day, or, or, or actually I was thinking to myself in bed, I thought, hang on a minute. What if I've just forgotten to take the plastic layer off? What if there was just a plastic layer on the whiteboard? Yes, I know, you can see what's coming next. So I look on the whiteboard the other day, and I'm peeling back this little bit of plastic. Oh, blow me in there! There's a bit of plastic on it! So I, I, I pull all the plastic off. I had things wrote on the whiteboard, so I had to write, uh, type them down in my notes because I needed to remember them. And uh, I, I'm, now we've got a perfect whiteboard again. So, yeah, we're going to do a couple of whiteboard videos, I think. So, this time we are starting with a little subject I like to refer to as Adam's Kryptonite, which is time management. Now, I want to relay something to you guys, uh, as you will be aware. Time management. I want to relay the fact, well, I want to relay a few facts... Uh, I'm terrible at writing on a whiteboard, so please don't expect anything incredible. Um, I am not a teacher. I'm not licensed. I am not qualified. I am not all the rest of it in any way, shape, or form. Although, you never know. I might be all right as a teacher. Who knows? I, know, I might be quite good. You don't know. I might be terrible. I might be quite good. We, we never know. Um, and also, uh, you know, also do your own research and think a little bit more independently. Don't just take what I'm saying as gospel or anything like that. But with that being saying, said, time management. Now, I wanted to talk about this because recently I've not been getting my time management uh, very well. Now, one of the fundamental things in reselling is time management because, look, you've got a lot of things to do. You've got your listing, you've got your packaging, uh, you've got, what else have you got? You've got your uh, photography, I should know this, I've been doing it five years almost. You've got your photography, you've got your, uh, oh, what else is there? Blooming hell, I don't know now. Um, well, I mean, you have to do your, your relists and your promoted and things like that that don't take up too much time. Oh, I've missed the best one out. You've got your sourcing, you've got your accounting, you've got your answering emails. Uh, well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put offers slash messages because that's how I always put them on my uh, to-do list. Um, and, you know, you've probably got a few other things. What else What else can we think here? Let me have a think. I might need to come back to you in a sec. Processing as well. Just keeping things tidy. Processing. Tidying. Etc, etc. We don't really need any more than that. There's, there's probably a couple of other things on there as well. But... They're kind of the main ones. And we have some things here that are uh, constant. So you constantly have to be listing. You kind of constantly have to be packing. Obviously, if things aren't selling, you can't pack. But so long as you're constantly listing and you're listing the right stuff, then you're packaging. And also, you're kind of photographing quite a lot because to, fo to list new items, you need to photograph. Um, you need to do your relist and you're promoted. But this is kind of uh, very low time. So we need a low time. Um, and then you're sourcing. Obviously, you can streamline that. But it's something that you have to do to obviously keep things going. Um, and then you need to do your counting once a month. You need to streamline that. Offers and messages, again, sort of can be a uh, low time. Obviously, you might get a few issues, returns, stuff like that in your messages. And you think, oh, it might take me a little longer to deal with. Processing, obviously that's just cleaning things and stuff. Now, this is something that can be streamlined as well. And then tidying. So, what we need to do for time management is we need to think, right, what do I do on a daily basis that essentially I can cut down, right? That I can actually streamline. So, first off, packaging. How do we streamline packaging? Very simple. So, what we need to do is we need to get a, get a setup, 
a packaging setup that is that is laid out that is kept tidy again going back to its tidy tidying is a key bloody element in reselling um so we need to get a cell that is all laid out so you've got a nice uh, bench you've got under your bench you've got your uh, jiffy bags you've maybe got your boxes to your side of you you've got your bubble wrap to your side of you you've got all different things going on under there letters and um i don't know what you call the um i don't use them that often but poly mailers that's what we call them for clothing and stuff uh you've got your tape guns you've got your stationery if you need stationery you've got uh well have i, have I got some in here i don't think i have got any in there actually i think they're downstairs but i've uh you know like sticky notes and stuff i i actually put sticky notes on my parcels so and i know what's in them before I labelled them up. Um, you know, you might have loads of different things. You might even have notepads in your in your packaging. You know, loads and loads of stuff. I can't even wheel off how many things uh, that are good to there. But if you don't have a set packaging area, if you don't have a, a properly, um, you know, kind of uh, what do you call it? Efficient. That's a good word. That's a good word I'm looking for. If you don't have an efficient area, an efficient setup, then you are going to take longer with your packaging. So you can cut down your time there a little bit. But once you've got a setup, the only thing that's going to cut down your time with packaging is really either selling small items or... Uh, just getting better at it, getting quicker at it over time. That's what I've done. I've got quicker at it. Um, you can obviously use certain packaging materials that might be more uh, efficient time-wise. So there might be certain things that uh, you could actually buy on eBay that can mean, oh, right, yeah, that'll actually save me a bit more time to do, to do it this way. Um, possibly maybe uh, not necessarily getting items that, you know, not when, you, when you're sourcing, not getting too many items that have to go in boxes and stuff. So again, and leaning back to that idea of picking things up that are a bit easier to package so then you spend a little bit less time on your packaging photography is always going to be photography uh, and it shouldn't take too much time but again what i'm noticing here while i'm writing these down and just thinking about these by the way, this video is unscripted. I don't really do scripted videos. It's, I don't even do scripted videos on my philosophy channel, and I really, really should do, but I don't. Um, but basically, what I'm seeing here is we've got a common theme. If you're sourcing items that are big, bulky, or that need testing, or that need cleaning, all the rest of it, then this sourcing, that one action there, is going to give you uh, a lot more time within your photography, your packaging and even your listing really as well. Uh, not necessarily your relist or your offers or your messages. It will also give you more time in your processing and possibly even a little bit more time in your tidying as well, just generally. So we can see now, actually, now I'm formulating this in my mind, we can see that the root cause of time is essentially your sourcing. Not just how you're sourcing, but what you're sourcing. So... Yes, how you're sourcing, because of course, if you just go to charity shops, you might only be able to pick up a few items here or there, and therefore you're not, you might not be able to get as many items, and then you have to keep going out sourcing, you have to keep spending time going down the charity shops every day, every other day. So, you might want to consider going to auctions or going to car boots, maybe consider getting some contact or something like that if you can, look online for people, possibly things like that. When you're out and about, make sure you're getting your word out there, spreading your word about what you like to buy and possibly someone will come along, maybe a house clearance guy at the car boot and you might get f f friendly with them essentially. And, and then obviously you can make a deal and you can buy in bulk. And then what that does is that alleviates your time with the sourcing element of it and you won't have to go out every day and therefore you've got a bit of time back with that. But also, if you can do that as well as sourcing items that are small, now if you're buying in bulk, you probably won't have the luxury of just buying small items. I mean, yeah, possibly if you're in a certain niche video games, uh, maybe sealed toys or action figures, you might be able to to actually buy in bulk and most of the items just happen to be small anyway, and that's a brilliant thing. But if you're buying in bulk, there might be a few items that are big in there, but you've saved so much time on sourcing, even if you have got a few bigger items, you're not too worried about wasting a bit more time packaging anyway, because you've saved so much time in your sourcing. But yeah, let's say you actually hone it down so you can buy in bulk and you only have to go sourcing a couple of times a month. So you're buying really in bulk, you're buying a lot, you're buying... Uh, a van load at a time or a couple of car loads at a time or at least a car load at a time or something 
then um, obviously what you can do, especially if you are buying smaller items as well, um, then you're saving time on resourcing, you're saving time on photography because smaller items don't take as long to photograph and you're saving time packaging and yeah, you might save a little bit of time listing. It really depends. I mean, you, with smaller items, smaller items can still take a while to list. I mean, think about it this way. Yeah, you know, a diamond ring might be really, really small, but it's going to take you quite a while to list because you've got to put more information into that title. So smaller items don't just mean that, you know, you, you're going to have um, sort of um, a lower time listing them, you know, less time listing them. Some of them are going to take a lot longer listing, even though they're a smaller item. So... But, but what we can get there from the sourcing is we can save time there and if we can also buy smaller items we save time on the packaging, we save time most likely on the photography and also if we can source things that are new and sealed or that don't need much cleaning or testing that's another positive to alleviate some time here. Now with We List and Promoted this is a very very low time scale so you don't really need to worry about that too much. I was simply just writing that down just as one of the things we do. Accounting, something we something else we need to hone down because when I first started about four and a half years ago I was spending a long time each month on my accounting. Didn't have any system set up, didn't have anything set up. These days I spend 15 minutes a month doing my account. No joke, I know it sounds almost unbelievable but that is where I've got to. I have my little black book, what I do, well actually, I, I actually should clarify, it's not just 15 minutes a month. I do write in my little black book every day or every other day, very, very quickly, literally seconds it takes me, when I've you know, bought some stock or something like that. So I'm doing that throughout the month, but as I say, that's just seconds over, the, over the, the month really anyway. But then at the end of the month, well, sorry, at the start of the new month, I then spend the 15 minutes going online, looking at my PayPal reports, printing them off and stuff, printing off my Amazon reports, looking at that black book, transferring some information into a profit and loss. But because I've been doing this for so long and I've got my processes honed down, I can get it down really, really quick. Even like when I first started, moved over and migrated to that new process, which isn't really a new process for me anymore because I've been doing it so long. But uh, when I first migrated to that process, yeah, it took me about 35 minutes, 40 minutes to do that. But now I've really got it down to a, to a good time. So if you don't know how to account properly, you are going to be spending quite a lot of time essentially on your accounting each month. You may spend an hour, two hours, three hours, four hours. It really depends. You know, it depends on how familiar you are with accounting and what's what really with it. So... Uh, accounting is something that you kind of need to look into a little bit and you need to look and find a way of actually scaling back the time so that then you've got more free time available. Um, and so, uh, well I say free time, but actually more time to be able to put back into the business, to recycle into the business. So uh, you could always do like people do. I don't do any accounting software. In fact, it might even speed it up even more for me if I did an accounting software. It's something I do want to look into. But to be honest, the way I do it, I'm so familiar with it, but it doesn't take me hardly any time anyway. So uh, you've got like QuickBooks, self-employed and places like that. You've got, I think you've got something called Zero as well or something like that. It's an accounting software. So you can also look into them. Messages and offers, they won't take too long. You can avoid the headache of returns by, you know, doing good photos, doing good description, making sure people know what they are getting. So obviously the best you can, describe your items well in the listing process up here. And then you won't have the headache of too many messages, too many returns. Although saying that, I put uh, dimensions of certain bits of pottery and ceramics in my descriptions a lot of the time. Sorry, not in my descriptions, in my photos. But people still message me with wanting to request some uh, dimensions. But the good thing is, because I've got them in my photos, I don't have to go down to my storage area and measure them, measure them again. I just simply direct on, uh, that person to the photo. I say, look, I've got measurements in my photo. And then, obviously, that saves me some time down the line anyway. So, obviously, you're going to come across messages. And you're going to obviously have to answer your offers as well that you get. But um, if you can streamline the listing process and make sure you've got enough information in the uh, listing as possible, then you can obviously um, avoid some of that headache further down the line with messages and further down the line with returns and stuff like that. Again, processing, you can cut that time down by buying smaller items, by buying things that don't need cleaning or testing. And if you are buying things that need cleaning or testing, because I've not really touched upon that too much, so maybe it's your prerogative, your 
uh, you really love it, you're passionate about things that do need cleaning and testing, and that's fine, you can sell them no problem. Um, but what I would say is that you factor that into your profit, so maybe buy things that are higher value. If you're really into things, you really, really do want to sell things that do need cleaning and testing, buy them low if you can, as best you can, get a really, really good buying price, because the buying price is key, and then obviously make them higher value items, make them £50 plus, make them £100 plus, so that then, um, even though they're a bit more time to deal with, you're thinking a bit more of a time sink, uh, time sink, even though they're a bit more of a time sink, you can uh, obviously warrant that because they're a higher value item. And then tidying is the biggest one, really. Make sure, and I'm, I'm terrible at this, so I'm not, I'm not practicing what I preach here a lot of the time, but I know from my own folly, let's just say that, that tidying is the biggest one. Make sure you are tidy because it will F you up. It really will. If you're not tidy, then you're constantly going to be tripping over things. You're, you won't be able to work. You'll feel demotivated. You'll feel sluggish. You won't want to go into that environment packing items because there's mess everywhere. It's terrible. That is one of the single biggest things, tidying. It really, really is. So, Essentially, what we need to do is hone down all of these processes one by one, where you can go, go through them one by one, honing them down, and then you'll see that you'll get a bit more time available. And if you have more time available, you'll be able to list more. And that's the key, because the more you can list, and obviously the more efficient you are at listing, and, and obviously the, the better your titles are and all the rest of it, then the more you will sell. So all this here here, essentially, is trying to get you to a point where you've effectively kind of uh, honed all these things down, you've got enough stocking, you're always, you're always comfortable and you've always got a good amount of stocking, or there's always stock coming through the door, and it means that you can spend the most time possible on this very important thing up here called listing on eBay or listing on Amazon. And if you can do that, um, then yeah, obviously as you list more, you sell more, and then you're going to package more, and it's going to take a bit more time away from you. But ultimately, uh, if you can do that, you're going to earn more as well anyway. And then the, you will hit a point where uh, the point of no return, basically, point of no return, where um, you simply can't do any more on your own. But that point, so long as you've got all these things um, very, very efficient, is going to be a point in which you're earning a lot of money anyway and you could possibly afford to hire someone on a very very part-time basis and so that hiring someone gets you more time back then you can possibly focus on more sourcing or more listing that's probably the two you want to focus on not any really any of the others you want to focus on more sourcing or more listing with the time you've got back from employing someone part-time and then obviously uh, you can earn more and more and more scale it up more and more and more possibly by a small premises maybe employ if you want to go down this route you employ another person or something like that and you grow it grow it grow it grow it and uh, it depends on whether you want to go down that route i'm quite happy being a one-man band i'm quite happy doing it uh, the way I do it, I like being a small business. I don't have uh, incredible intentions of growing it to millions and millions of pounds or anything like that. I like what I do. I like the processes that I have. I like um, doing it just the way I do it, essentially. Uh, and, but it is all dependent on you, what you want. You know, if you want to take it that, that way, that's prob probably the best way to do it. But this is all dependent on you putting in, this is all dependent on you putting in a good amount of time. I'm not talking you're putting in six, seven hour days. I'm talking you're putting in 12 to 14 hour days, really. If, you know, if uh, obviously assuming that you want to earn a good amount of money. If you don't want to earn like a good amount of money or, you know, even just a, a healthy full time wage, then obviously you can work a little bit less. You can work seven, eight hours a day. Oh, my finger's gone off, you can work seven, eight hours a day. And of course, once you've built the business up and you've got these things more efficient, 
you can take a bit more time. You don't have to, you know, 12, 14 hour days, yeah, in the first year or two, or the first year specifically, but then after that, you can go down to seven, eight hours because you've built a store up, you've built a business up, and, you know, you've put a lot of timing up front, and so, and you've got efficiency with all this stuff, so you're allowed to, well, well you're not allowed, not that you're allowed, you're allowed to work however long you want, any time, but re really in a business, but... You know, you can kind of give yourself the allowance of going down a bit and just being a bit more comfortable with it and a bit more relaxed with it. But yeah, so that is my thoughts on time management. I wanted to do that because I've been struggling with it recently. Uh, we've also got kind of within this the idea of when do we get up, when do we go to bed. But that's all subjective based on people's uh, ideas, essentially. I've always enjoyed it. I enjoyed it last year. I don't do it at the moment in winter, but I did enjoy it last year when I was waking up about 6. I was going to bed about um, 10, 11, and I'd wake up at 6, and I found that I was very productive in the morning, and then I'd just work right through till 7, 8 o'clock at night, and I loved that. I absolutely loved it. Of course, during the day, I'd have little breaks here and there or anything. I wasn't a madman with it, but I absolutely loved that style of working, and it's something that I'm going to return to, especially as the mornings get brighter and, you know, spring is kind of approaching the moment I'm getting up about half seven, eight o'clock. So to be honest, you know, it's not brilliant or anything at the moment, but being be in winter, I'm just happy to let my body naturally wake up a little bit later. And then as, as, as I say, when we get into spring, I'll naturally fall back into quite easily that sort of six o'clock routine that I did really enjoy. But that doesn't matter. You could work, you could be a night owl. You could work all night and sleep all day if you want to do that because we're self-employed. We have that flexibility to do that. So uh, if you want to work... I don't know, nine at night to six in the morning or you work at, uh, you maybe work a little bit in the day but then all night or something like that or you work from 12, um, you know, lunchtime or 12 noon uh, all the way till nine o'clock at night. So it doesn't matter. So if you're full time at this, it doesn't matter. Uh, but obviously you've got to put the hours in somewhere because if you don't put the hours in, then obviously you won't make the money essentially. But yeah, so that's my subjective idea on, on when I worked as well. But yeah, so that's my time management anyway. That's just my ideas on it. Uh, feel free to whack a comment down below. Um, and yeah, I, I suppose I'll see you in the next video. Um, so Subscribe if you haven't already. Uh, obviously, click the like button if you did enjoy it. Uh, and as I already said it, actually, I was going to say it twice then. But throw a comment down below, you know, as I said. And uh, I will see you in the next one. So see you very soon, guys. Watch it, I slow down.